Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials, I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about uh, array list constructors. I'm going to open up my uh, website, javacjava.com here, right? And I'm going to click on the begin button and scroll down to ArrayList Constructors. Okay, the ArrayList class has three overloaded constructors. The first constructor has no arguments and creates an ArrayList with an initial capacity of 10 elements. Okay, here's what it would look like just declaring that. So, ArrayList, and then of course um, inside of the diamond syntax, I'm specifying string as the type variable and then reference variable a, and then new array list, of course, string inside the diamond syntax too, and then you can see the constructor, there's nothing in the array list constructor there. So, now, um, so 10 is the capacity. That doesn't necessarily mean it'll create stuff that you can like iterate through, and I'll demonstrate that in the code there, but uh, interestingly, there is no method or property to get the current capacity of your array list object. Now other classes such as string builder have a method, you know, dot capacity that returns the current instance capacity. ArrayList does not. Okay, so the next constructor allows you to set the initial capacity to a positive integer value. So it's basically the same, only inside of the constructor here, I just put 41, right? So our capacity is now 41 object elements. Now just to reiterate, there is no method or property to get the current capacity of your ArrayList object. Okay. The last constructor allows you to pass in a collection object, um, which is basically, you know, usually just some sort of a, maybe an array or a list or something like that, right? So, the ArrayList class is a small piece of what is known as the collections framework. Now, the collections framework is a massive topic. Um, you know, I suppose that error handling is similar in scope. Uh, by now, you should be familiar with null pointer exception, and just like it is a single class in the topic of exception handling, ArrayList is a single class in the collections framework. One of the most important things to keep in mind is that the ArrayList class implements an interface called list, because you're going to see it a lot. Now, don't worry about the collections framework just yet. You will understand more about it as you progress along. In the example below, I will demonstrate how to convert and pass in an ordinary array as an argument to the ArrayList constructor. Okay, so on this particular statement here, we're just basically declaring and initializing this reference variable sArray to this particular array here, right? String array, Alaska, Colorado, Kentucky, Ohio, Texas, Vermont, good old ordinary array, ordinary good old array, whatever you want to call it. Now in the next line here, I've got to kind of put the cart before the horse there to describe, um, you know, how we're going to actually create like a collection object. So just bear with me on this here. Um, I'm not going to spend much time explaining a you know, list and arrays as list here. But um, basically there's this class called arrays and that will allow you to work with the uh, ordinary good old arrays there, right? And in this arrays class, I'll just come up here to the documentation for the Java 8 API up here, right? class arrays, right? And it has this method called as list. Okay, let's come down here to add list. So basically it will return a list type, right? And you can specify, um, it's right, right here basically. You could specify a generic type variable inside of the diamond syntax or the chevrons, if you want to call it that, right? And then you can pass in basically like a, an array okay and so here's an example that they've got in their API there you know uh, you're gonna get list string and then your reference variable stooges arrays as list and you know basically they just they uh, passed in three string literals okay in my example up here I'm passing in the actual um, s array into the um, arrays as list here right so in the list interface, I'm creating a list, lowercase list, uh, reference variable. It has to be a string type, and this will just basically populate this as a, um, well, 
let's go into the collection object here real quick there and then this list here right um, actually I'm gonna come up here to array list and let's scroll all the way up here to the constructors here so you can see in the constructor arguments here it's got this collection right and then in the diamond syntax extends e right or and then the actual parameter name of C so this looking at this this can be very confusing when you're when you're learning Java here, you know, as far as these declarations go. So that's kind of what I'm trying to explain here. Um, if we come back over to the list documentation, right? It's an interface list and you can see the implementing classes. Uh, here's a ray list right here, okay? And it extends collection. If you look at this, this right here, right? So public interface list and extends collection. So if we go full cycle back around here, right? We can see that uh, you got to pass it in a collection object, right? And so that's basically how we can create ourselves a collection object. The list is a collection object. Now, array list is a subclass of this interface here, right? So if we scroll back up here, right, you can see uh, all implemented interfaces and there's list right there, okay? So arrays, this particular as list, will return back a list object that we can pass in as an argument into our um, array list constructor here. So that's kind of how that goes. And if that's confusing, don't worry about that because in future tutorials, I'm gonna go into list a little bit more and everything like that. It's kind of why I said I'm putting the cart before the horse, but in order to construct this, understand this third method of this um, third constructor, not method, third constructor, creating an instance here of array list, you kind of have to understand a little bit about this. But this is kind of the simplest example that I could could give right here into obtaining this basically to pass in this argument. Okay, so if we do a system out print line and then our C, which is our reference variable array list, then it'll get Alaska, Colorado, Kentucky, Ohio, Texas, Vermont. Oh, about that quote there, a little typo there, okay? So I'm moving on to the source code here, but um, now in my ArrayList introduction tutorial, I discussed three basic ways to declare and initialize array, an ArrayList instance. Now throughout my tutorials, I will not be demonstrating the legacy syntax, right? The legacy syntax does not include any generic type safe stuff, so. But I will be demonstrating only the generic type safe versions, right? Like this and like this and of course the only difference between this and this is basically uh, the inferred type over here when just to the when you're creating instantiating the array list object all right let's come down here and highlight the source code here Control c to copy or right click and select copy Let me explain a lot in this one here Let's move the browser off screen. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by right-clicking, selecting new, shortcut, CMD, next, and finish. It's just that easy. Let's go ahead and open up our command prompt there. And first thing I'm going to do is type in Java C, which is a Java compiler command. Press enter. You should see all this stuff scroll by. Now, um, if you see an error message instead, Go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen. CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory and backslash tells it to go to the root. Now I'm going to make a directory with the MD command called Java. And I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. I'm going to make another uh, subfolder here called ArrayList Constructors. Change directories to that. Basically, I hit CD and then I hit tab on my keyboard to change that real quick there. Notepad array list constructors.java. Okay, array list constructors.java is going to be the name of the source code file. Okay, let's go ahead and just control V to paste or right click and select paste. Okay, fairly simple. We have to import the java.util.star, right? Or we could also for example, just if we wanted, we just need access to the ArrayList class, we could just do it that way too. Um, Star either way, I'll just leave it like that, uh, basically. You see how that works both ways there. That way we're just in, importing basically this one class or just everything inside of the util, the star. It really doesn't make a difference either way, but it's good to know both syntax ways. Okay, so we got our main method entry point here. And the first thing I'm doing 
is the first constructor demonstration here, the no, no arguments in there, right? So that will initialize, uh, that, that will create a uh, instance of an ArrayList instance there with a capacity of 10. So I'm just basically initializing this int counter zero and then using an enhanced for loop to loop through this, this uh, ArrayList here, right? That has a capacity of 10. So what is going to be our result when we come down to this print line here, right? When we display counter plus the string literal. Well, let's just go ahead and save this and run it here real quick here. Let's clear our screen. Java C, compile this. What did I just do? Oops, you know what? I need that star in there because I'm actually importing other things in the array list there. So let's go ahead and come back here. Let's clear our screen. Recompile. Oh, they want to do class. Boy, I'm just batting a thousand here. Let's try this again. Java C. Recompile the Java file and Java to run it. Invoke the virtual machine when you want to invoke the array list constructors class. And so basically right off the bat we get even trying to like loop through and seeing, you know, assuming the capacity of an object-based array would be, you know, 10, right? I was assuming maybe it might display like null or something like that, you know, or loop through it in any particular way. But you can see counter doesn't even increase here. It doesn't, doesn't increase there at all. So really there is like no way of getting the, the current capacity even though the current size of the array is basically zero, the capacity would be nice if we could get something there. I just couldn't let that one go. So the next, the next one I'm doing here is array list, string type variables, right? And then B is the reference variable name. And I'm using the constructor and I'm passing it basically 41. So we're specifying the capacity here. Same thing. We're not going to be able to figure out the capacity. We just can't obtain that capacity at all, so it's very strange. But anyway, I'll get into that a little bit later there. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do here is demonstrate the third and final constructor here for the ArrayList class. And so here is the ordinary string, right? Here's what I talked about with the, uh, you know, the list interface and the list reference type, of course, we're using the generic syntax, so it has to be a string class. And then the arrays class, and invoking the asList method on the S array, which is this string array up here, will give us our list um, reference variable pointing to a, an array, basically, of list type. Okay, so then we're going to take that and pass that in as the argument there. And of course, we're specifying string, right? So that's all it's gonna take is string. We're all dealing with string classes here. So if we tried to pass in something like a string builder, it's gonna go off on an error. And then I just, um, after I went ahead and, you know, this will create that new array list object um, with the current state basically set to all those various um, arrays there, right? And then I just added Hawaii here using the add method here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through the string with the enhanced, or loop through the array list with this enhanced um, for loop here. String s and then c, of course, is our array list. And I want to do this. I want to demonstrate it to show you that each one of these elements here becomes its own unique string object element in the array list here as well. Okay? So basically, we'll just loop through those, displaying each array list C element, right? Plus a string on that. And then I'll just uh, do a simple print line to the C, which overwrites basically behind the scenes the two string method, and I'll display that to the console there. Okay? So that's basically what we get there. The array list C elements as we loop through there Alaska, Colorado, Kentucky, Ohio, Texas, Vermont, which was all contained in our original good old string. And then we added the element. Hawaii to the very end. And then that's just displayed to the console right there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, close out of that, and leave you guys with some final thoughts here. So um, 
I have no idea why there is no method or property for obtaining the capacity of the current array list object. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me considering there are two constructors and two methods that affect the uh, array list capacity. Now, um, on the next topic there, don't worry about fully understanding the list interface and the array, arrays as list method. I'll be explaining more about them in future tutorials. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.